Hi there, I'm Josh Finn. Welcome to the build video for the 2023 Science Olympiad Stinger airplanes from J&H Aerospace. These are for the Science Olympiad flight event, not to be confused with right stuff since the rules technically allow you to build various and sundry other configurations. But these are about the optimum designs that you can come up with. There are slight improvements that you might be able to make, but these airplanes fly very well. They're capable of flight times in the three minute range in the hands of a skilled flyer from moderate altitudes. This is the Division C Stinger, and this is the Division B Stinger. And what you will discover is that the only difference between the two airplanes is the fuselage. So the fuselages are literally interchangeable, but the Division B rules allow a longer airplane, which is easier to fly and frankly flies longer. The Division C rules are going to limit you to a shorter airplane due to the constraints of the storage box that the airplane lives in. And we'll talk about the storage boxes in a little bit. So with that, let's go ahead and get started talking about the tools and materials you'll need to complete your Stinger kit. All right, so some of the tools that we're going to use in the construction of the airplane, you're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of wire cutters, you're going to want a Sharpie, and this is for coloring your uh, one of your wing panels the appropriate color. Uh, I recommend having a ruler on hand for measuring things. Uh, it gives you a second line of validation on some of your uh, dimensions for the airplanes. Uh, it's not critical for the construction of this airplane, but I highly recommend having it on hand. Um, you'll need a fresh single edge razor blade. It needs to be as sharp as possible, especially for trimming the covering material on the airplane. Now these tools over here, uh, some of them are not completely critical, uh, but you will need a pair of scissors of some sort. I, I like these small scissors. Um, because they're also useful for trimming your rubber motors. So they can do dual duty of trimming covering material uh, roughly to size for putting it on the covering frame, and also they're useful for rubber motors. Uh, speaking of rubber motors, this is a pair of locking needle nose pliers, also known as hemostats, um, and those are very useful for tying rubber motors and then a pair of tweezers can be useful for getting small parts out. So these tools over here and the razor blades are all available on our website. You'll have to look elsewhere for uh, your regular needle nose pliers and wire cutters, but most uh, uh, machine shops or whatever will have them. You can get them at a hardware store or what have you. Uh, some of these are a little more specialized and so they're a little harder to get. All right, so let's talk about adhesives that you need to complete your airplane. I know it seems strange, but we need packing tape to complete this airplane. It's very useful in how we're going to lay out the construction of the aircraft. So you don't have to have a fancy tape dispenser like this one, but you need to have packing tape. Um, nice wide packing tape is very useful for this. It doesn't stick to super glue really well, so um, it makes it very easy to create a non-stick surface with it. Speaking of non-stick surfaces, I do recommend having parchment paper on hand for any construction that you're going to be doing where you need to lay something down. So parchment paper is highly recommended. Uh, we won't use it too much in the Stinger build, but there, there are some places where you might find it handy. It keeps you from gluing things to your table and making a mess. Speaking of glues, this is Gorilla uh, Super Glue. Um, it's medium thickness cyanoacrylate. We also have Bob Smith Medium uh, CA that's also uh, very useful for this build. Either one of them work with CA Accelerator available from Bob Smith. Uh, Zap also has it and so on. Uh, but I sell both of these products on our store. This is Molly Coat 33. It is a silicon based oil that is used for lubricating your rubber motors. Do not use other materials like WD-40 or 
petroleum jelly or Vaseline or whatever because all of those will deteriorate your rubber motor. And in fact, since part of your build requires you to use petroleum jelly, you need to take precautions to ensure that this is kept well away from your rubber motor and any residue from it is kept away from it because it actually acts like acid and begins to dissolve the rubber. So this or Armorol or equivalent uh, silicon based oils are what you want to use to lubricate your rubber motors. Now speaking of petroleum jelly, we use petroleum jelly to secure your covering film to the covering frame so that you can get a very nice covering job on your airplane so it looks nice but most importantly it flies well. 3M77 is the adhesive of choice for securing plastic covering to model airplane frames. So your, the, when you secure the covering to the actual wing and tail of your aircraft, this is the material you, you need. It's a little more expensive than some of the alternatives. Uh, I know Elmer's makes one and there are several others, but I find that the longevity of this uh, adhesive is much better. The stickiness of it is much better. Um, it's just a, a better material for that task and uh, a lot of the other uh, adhesives will actually release within a few months so you can be part way through your season with a very nice flying airplane and then the covering starts peeling off and then it becomes not quite as nice flying of an airplane. So get you some 3M77 and it will solve those problems. Okay so we were talking about boxes and uh, let's talk about storing your airplane. So as per the rules for Science Olympiad flight, you need an appropriate storage container for your airplane. You are actually required to have it. And the airplane is required to fit in its assembled condition inside the box. You are allowed to rotate the propeller, but the airplane is not allowed to be bent or whatever to force it inside. The bottom line is, I have dropped my airplane in there. Oh, by the way, there is a senior flyer hanging out in there with it. So, this box is a kit that we sell. It complies with the rules, um, gives you a fairly optimized storage container um, that, your, that your airplane complies with. And you are required to supply your own container. They do not supply them on site, so you need your own and uh, so that gives you something to store your airplane in so it does not become damaged uh, walking through the wind for example to uh, to your contest site or through the rain or having student uh, so-and-so brush against your plane and break it or somebody lay their book bag on top of it you get the picture all of that being said we do not want to store the airplane in the box in its assembled condition when we're not at a competition. So in that case, we can take the airplane apart. Forgive me, I've not taken this one out of the nose bearing before, so the nose bearing is still a little bit tight. And now, I can stick all of the parts of my airplane inside the box, and they're not weighing down on each other too much, so the airplane doesn't warp or anything, and there we have it. Also, by virtue of the airplane breaking up like that, you can store four or five airplanes in here. So you can have backups upon backups. You can have different versions for different flying conditions. You can show up with all of them. You're only allowed to check in two airplanes, but if you have five airplanes and you break two of them in practice, you still have two to check in plus a backup uh, based on whatever conditions you've got. So you can make some de decisions there. So these boxes with this design of airplane allow you to bring a lot of airplanes. Your teammates can share boxes or whatever and, and so you get a, a better scenario. So having discussed all of that, let's get started with building our Stingers for 2023. The kit for your stinger has a lot of parts in it so we're going to pull this apart and we're going to show you 
all of those contents um, and this gives you an opportunity to check through to make sure that you have everything that you need. It's important as you're unloading all of this that you not get parts lost. There are some parts that are easily lost and then you're going to be emailing me asking for replacements. Um, occasionally there are errors made in construction so you know make sure you have all of the things that are supposed to be included. So you have an instruction manual and this really is just a handout of basic information. This does not tell you how to assemble the airplane but there is a build manual on the product page on our website so you can have a textual version of everything that you're seeing here on how to construct your, your stinger. Now, after about page three in here, you will see a set of diagrams. You may need these diagrams uh, depending on what the, the final version of the rules are, but the bottom line is this is good to have in your documentation packet so you can explain that you know how this aircraft works and what its basic arrangement is. Then there's another page that is very important. This is an example flight log. This is a piece of information that allows you to record flight data as per the rules uh, which are specified. Um, and I give you some of the basic parameters that you should be looking at to record, uh, both the required ones and ones that I recommend recording. And there are a few others that you might want to record. We have a full curriculum which discusses some of this and gives, uh, contains some example flight logs that I personally have produced for my own usage. And they have a few more pieces of information from this. But since these are written logs, um, it gets a little difficult to have all that information on a page. Um, that, that's easy to hand out. But the bottom line is that is a, P a document that you will need for your records. So you'll have two propellers. Now these are Icara propellers. We're going to talk in a minute about these uh, indoor free flight supply propellers which are slightly different. Uh, your kit may contain either one. They're both very usable and you can achieve full performance with either one. It's purely a uh, supply chain issue of which ones I have at the time. You'll have some veggie bag material for your covering for your stinger. These big pieces of wood are not part of your airframe. These are for building a covering frame that looks like this and that is used for getting a good covering job on your airplane. So keep these handy. Next, you're going to have two sets of fuselages. So if you are in high school, Division C, you have to use the short fuselages. If you're in middle school, Division B, you are going to want to use the long fuselages because the long fuselages make for a better flying airplane. Let me set these, this propeller over here. This is your parts sheet for your stinger that includes ribs, for the wing and tail, wing mount material, gussets for the wing, and some tab material. You probably will not need these over here. If we have to switch over to Icara bearings at any point, you'll, you'll find yourself needing these. Uh, but so far, we've avoided needing those. I'm not going to take this off of this carrier sheet yet, but these are the wing tips for your airplane and that is very thin balsa so don't break it out until you need it. I'm actually going to set some of these back on here. These plywood parts form the back of your fuselage so they provide a mounting point for your tail boom and also a rear hook for your rubber motor. You can have a bag of 332nd inch rubber that's used to fly your airplane. Keep this in a cool, dark location, out of sunlight, out of hot areas. Do not leave it in a hot car or anything of that nature. Don't get it near petroleum products. You know, keep it sealed up even if, if it's around the vapors of them, like car exhaust, for example. 
you're going to have these carbon fiber rods and you will have a total I've got yeah of eight of these these are 030 carbon rods uh, be careful with these they don't break too easily but if you mishandle them they will break this is a full-size set of plans for the airplane showing how to build it um, you could actually in theory build this airplane entirely just from this uh, this piece of information This bag contains a lot of very, very small parts, so you want to pay attention when you remove the parts from this bag and maybe find yourself a white sheet of paper to lay them on. I'm going to pour the whole thing out, which I actually don't recommend that you do, but I'm doing it. The reason I don't recommend it is there are four little Teflon washers right there. Those get lost pretty easily. If you have an indoor free flight supply propeller, you do not have Teflon washers because you have a blue plastic bearing, uh, blue plastic washer right there already installed. You will not have the aluminum bearings because you have a black plastic bearing. If you don't have an IFAS propeller, you will have two of these bearings. Be careful with them. You cannot get them at the local hardware store. You cannot, in fact, get them from a mainstream uh, United States supplier. So like I said, I have two of those. Then I have propeller shafts, like so. And again, if you have an IFAS propeller, you won't have these because these come with a propeller shaft installed. This is a material called spider wire. To the average user, it just looks like thread. And it kind of is thread, except for its thickness and weight, it's about 10 times stronger. you will regardless of what propeller your airplane came with you will have a whole bunch of these little rubber bands and these should be treated in the same way that you treat the rubber for your airplane they're also sensitive to exposure to petroleum jelly and uh, various solvents and whatnot and then you'll have these little white plastic washers right here these serve as the O-rings for your rubber motor. And then you'll have some balancing clay. It is probable that you might have an example, which I had. Notice I said there were four of those little Teflon washers. If you look closely, there's one hiding there and there's one hiding there because that's what they do. We're gonna open up the plans for this airplane. As you can see, this contains most of the information necessary to complete this airplane. If you've built a model airplane for indoor free flight before, like Wright stuff in a previous year, you probably can use this to successfully complete this airplane because there are no particular surprises on this airplane. Everything is shown in its proper layout. We have the Division C side view here. We have the Division B side view right here. The top view is also Division C front view is interchangeable. Things to notice, this plan does show the wing slightly offset. Um, if you build the airplane with the wing centered on its wing mount, you will end up with slight offset. That's a good thing. It helps the airplane uh, turn flatter, which is more efficient. And again, we're show we have all the instructions, balancing, and so on. Now, what I'm going to recommend that you do is take a pair of scissors and cut these little ends off. Sure. 
turn your plans around. And do the same thing again. Now, we're going to, for the moment, cover all this up, but we're going to need to come back to that section of the plans here in a little while. So we're going to set the stab assembly template aside for the moment, because I want to start with the wing, just because I prefer to start with the wing. And since I'm building this airplane, it's mine, and so I'm going to build it that way. So we're going to take our packing tape, and we're going to force this to lay flat while we put a piece of tape down. And I'm leaving excess over the side. That way, this thing will tack down. Now, if you notice, I've made an error. I've got it real close to the edge, but I can correct for that. The first thing, though, is I want tape over this opposite side of my wing. Try to avoid getting too many wrinkles on here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over so it overlaps the edge of the table. Now this set of plans is laying relatively flat. Not perfectly, but close. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape. You could use packing tape for this step. Um, it's just up to your preference. Um, a lot of people prefer masking tape. Uh, the guy behind the camera insists on scotch tape. And since he did all the prototype planes for me, and they came out really nice, I can't disagree with him too much. So, I've got those hanging off the side of the table, not entangling with each other, and now, I'm going to be looking for carbon rods and a set of ribs. So we're going to pop out two of these carbon rods and then we're going to secure the remaining ones because we'll need those later. Now, there are a variety of ways to do this. I'm going to show you my preferred method. I'm going to snip off a little bit of packing tape here. I'm going to curl the end of the piece of tape under like that so it's not sticky there. I'm going to secure this piece of carbon so it's lined up with the end. And I'm putting my tape down here where it's not covering up anything other than just a straight section of leading edge. So I don't want to cover up that area, the end, or what have you. I'm going to curl another one of these over. Let me go over to the opposite side, a little away from the end. I'm going to tape that one down. Now I'm going to get my scissors in here. And if I do this right, I can cut this thing with a pair of scissors. It is misbehaving today. I can't get a good grip on it because I've already built another airplane and I have silicon oil all over me, so I'm going to cut it with that. Now, the piece of carbon just went flying. I have retrieved it. The reason I have retrieved it is I'm going to use this excess later. 
so I don't want that going away. Now for the back half of the wing, I'm going to secure this down hopefully by hand so that I can repeat this procedure and if you are in doubt of your ability to do this free-handed then secure it with tape because you don't want to waste uh, spar material for your airplane. That one is correctly to its full length. Now we're not going to tape that one down yet. With our rib set handy, I'm going to cut out one set of wing ribs. And these do have to be freed at the ends too. Now it is possible that your ribs won't fall completely out the first time. Uh, sometimes there will be a little bit of material where the laser doesn't perfectly cut through and so you have to just um, massage that out of there with a razor blade. And then you should be able to just come in here and pop these loose. And you'll have a couple of extra ribs. And yes, even though that does mean that they are technically spare ribs, I don't recommend eating them. Some of you, that joke just flew right over your head. Now if you notice, I am cleaning a little bit of flashing off the ends of these because you want them to have their nice sharp end there with just a little bit of, of flat facing right there. You should again have two extra ribs. Now we're going to get CA accelerator and our CA. Move this rib away a little bit. And so I'm going to put glue just on that flat end face, front and back. And I'm going to do that at the at an, a uh, wing tip here. So I'm going to secure this trailing edge in. And then I'm going to get a piece of tape. I'm going to tape this trailing edge down, or it could be the leading edge, it doesn't matter, um, so that that's all secured in place. And again, I'm staying away from any of the gusset marks or anything of that nature. Again, doing the same thing on the opposite wingtip. Uh, things that I'm paying attention to, I want my ribs straight up and down. There is no front and back to the ribs, but you do want them straight up and down, especially the ones at the tips, because that kind of governs the alignment of your wingtip plates.
Now, if the spars try to pull away so that they aren't staying in contact, you may need to apply some more tape, which is exactly what mine are doing. Next, look at these little gusset parts right here. We're going to remove those from the parts sheet. Well, we're going to remove four of them. Let me correct that. We only want four. Don't cut out any of the extras because then they'll become lost. And when you go to build your second stinger, um, you're going to be wondering where those got off to. Now you can stick a razor blade in the, um, the corner of it into that uh, gusset. It makes it very convenient to hold on to it while you're putting glue on there. And you just slide it in place here. Now, take your CA accelerator and dip it out so that you don't get it all over everything. Because it does dissolve certain things, like the finishes on tables. And now, the entire wing structure should be done. We're going to take a razor blade and use it to just kind of loosen things up. And with that, we have completed the structure for our stinger's wing. Okay, so the next step is that we're going to build the, uh, the horizontal tail. So what we want to do is peel our wing pattern up off the table. 
Now, it is very important, once I get this free, that you now set this aside someplace where it will be safe, because when you build your second stinger, you still need this. So, I'm going to, um, we've already shown you how to tape this down, so when I get the, uh, the stab here, we're just going to cut to when it's um, already taped down. Alright, so we're going to find two more sets of spars, so we can make more wing, uh, sorry, more stab uh, parts here. And again, these are exactly the same size as uh, what you used on your wing. The only difference between the wing and the stab is the ribs and the gussets are um, slightly different. So the, uh, the wing ribs are, uh, sorry, the stab ribs are thinner and the gussets are thinner. We're going to pop a set of stab ribs out. And again, should you break one, you do have a spare. Go to your sheet of wing tips and cut out four of these thin gussets for your tail.
Okay, so at that point your structure is completed for your horizontal tail. And we're just going to do the same thing we did before. Put accelerator down on it. Try not to have little oops. And don't do what I just did, which is a now I've got to get this up super fast. And as with your wing, don't throw your stab pattern away because you'll need it later. So the next step that we're going to proceed to is covering your wing and tail. Um, you'll see some slight differences because um, the example is with the uh, Science Olympiad Senior Flyer that we kit that we use. But the covering process exact is exactly the same. So we'll come back after that's all done. You're going to want to glue these shorter sticks to the ends. It's very important that you do that. And get this as square as you can. Again, little tricks like this you can use to make sure everything's squared up. because my piece of parchment paper is not quite big enough. Okay, so in preparation for our covering, we're going to get some petroleum jelly on here. And again, I'm using a paper towel. That prevents me from getting that material all over my hands and possibly contaminating the airframe to the point that um, the rubber motor is impacted also avoids a secondary issue which is um, making it difficult to get the glue joints secured on the airplane. Hold that in so that it's not getting all over everything. set that on top of our flying surfaces. So this is the covering material that we're using to cover the airplane. And what we're gonna do, I can find where I put my scissors. Now, this is basically like a hoop inside now, so I can stick my hand 
all the way through. I'll slide that covering frame away so I don't get the um, Vaseline all over my covering. Now, you can come in here and you can estimate the width of that. Again, you don't want to lay it on there. And so that gives me a good idea of how wide this needs to be. Set aside the rest of your covering. And that way you have plenty to use on your second airplane. Take this piece of covering and do not lay the covering frame on it yet. What you want to do is we are going to wad this covering up in a tight little ball. I know that sounds crazy, but it will make your airplane better if you trust me on this. So we take this and we wad it up very tightly. Try to make the smallest little ball you can. Now, take the covering, peel it apart, kind of start laying it out, and wad it up a second time. I know this seems like it's something that will hurt your covering, but it will not hurt the covering, it will not reduce its strength, and it will actually give you a smoother, better looking covering job than if you had left the, the film nice and flat and smooth. And the reason for that is we have now made the film a little bit springy so that it will lay down better on the airplane. It complies with the curvature of the wing better and so as a result you get a better looking and a better flying airplane. Now I'm spending a lot of time trying to smooth this out. I don't have to get it a hundred percent perfect at this point but I wanted to get it pretty nice. Now I'm going to take my covering frame and I'm putting Vaseline side down and laying it down on here. And so what I'm doing is pressing it onto the film so that it's secured. Now the film is still kind of loose so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull lengthwise along here. And that's going to allow me to get some of the wrinkles out. Now it is very important. I want the film pretty tight this way. Across wise it can actually be a little loose. If it's too tight across here um, it'll actually deform your structure when you uh, when you cover the airplane because remember the film's a little uh, uh, springy now and so it will actually um, tighten up on your flying surfaces and deform them and that actually makes your airplane harder to fly. So with that we've got the covering on the frame. Alright so take your flying surfaces with your covering frame out of the way and get your 3M Super 77 spray adhesive and again if you're having trouble locating it it is in my online store you can get it from me and then take your flying surfaces and I recommend actually taking them one at a time and going outside because this they're gonna get very sticky and you're gonna have trouble maneuvering things so what I'm gonna suggest you do is 
set them up as if you were going to go ahead and cover them. Uh, for, by the way, some of you are going to be seeing this footage in the Stinger video, and for those of you that are dealing with that, it's a much wider wing, and so you may have to do two separate covering stages because the, uh, the covering frame uh, may be too small to get everything on there uh, all at once. So in that case, you would spray just a wing, cover it, then take your stab and repeat the process separately putting a new piece of covering on the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the wing, we're going to go outside and we're going to spray it, uh, and then uh, we're going to skip uh, showing uh, spraying both of them, but we will show lining them up. Alright, so shake your 3M77 up real well and spray it a little bit, see which way the wind's going. Currently blowing that way, so I want the flying surface downwind do not hold this right up here against it. You're going to hold it out. I know that's something that feels a little awkward, but hold it a good distance out so that you can just get very light coverage like that. Now, try to not spray it on your hand. One thing you'll notice is that means I avoided that area where I was holding it, so now I have to go back. The wind is shifting again. And so we want to get that area. And with that, our frame is now very, very, very sticky. Notice I'm holding this with one hand. If I were to grasp it over here, you can see how this starts to pull a little bit, and I could actually rip every rib out on this wing. So what you want to do is if I'm going to take my hand loose of that side, I want to grab over here so that I can disengage in that manner. Don't switch sides, stay on one side of your flying surface. All right, so we're going to take our horizontal tail, we're gonna set it down, um, try to not get it super close to your wing, that way you have room to maneuver in here. The flips side of that is you want to make sure that they're both gonna stay within the bounds of the covering frame before you set the covering down. In my case, I've got them too far apart. Now, if something is misaligned a little bit as you're setting this down, Get it right before you come into contact. Do not try to reposition this or you will mess everything up. You get one shot when you're doing this. And so now I'm gonna go around very gently. I'm not pressing down, I'm literally just brushing my finger very gently along to bring, I'm, I'm not pressing the film onto my wing and tail. I am simply bringing them into contact. So I'm just brushing along here. I'm not pressing down. It's just enough that the covering comes into contact. So if you press down, your ribs will start to deflect and then break. And that's what we want to avoid. Now that I've done that, I'm going to come back I'm actually on this uh, wing and stab spars, I'm actually going to press down a little bit. Now my stab ribs are relatively flat so I can apply a little bit of pressure to them and they'll be fine. But for the wing, we're just going to very, very lightly rub this down. We don't want to press or we will break the ribs. The reason I have done this in two steps is so that I can avoid uh, getting the film shifted around and getting wrinkles um, in the wing. I did get a little wrinkle there, but that'll be okay. Now take that razor blade we talked about, that nice fresh sharp razor blade, and in between the wing and the stab is where we always want to start because you're going to have a strip of film along here that is going to want to wander otherwise and then it gets hard to trim the excess off. And I'm already having that problem right here. Now if you have an electric cautery this becomes a much easier problem to solve 
so you should strongly consider getting one of those from Indoor Free Flight Supply. Now if you're building a uh, stinger, it's allowable to you leave a little bit of excess around the edges, just a teeny tiny bit um, on the front and back of your wing, not on the tips, but on the front and back, and you can curl that under on those carbon fiber wing spars and stab spars, and it will give you a slightly uh, stronger uh, bond between the covering material and the aircraft. But for this airplane, we want no excess whatsoever. This airplane being the, uh, the senior flyer. should be able to lift this off of here. There's a little bit of static holding it down. So again, we just gently lift it off, and there's our horizontal tail. I've got a little bit of adhesive on there also that was holding it to the table. Now I've got a little bit of excess right here, so I just bring my razor blade along and trim off that excess. And so my one complaint with my covering job here is I got a little bit of a wrinkle here. It's best to have wrinkles away from the leading edge of the wing, so this is going to become the back of the wing. Now that we have covered the wing and stab for our stinger, let's put wing tips on them. So we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, start in with the stab tips. And so we'll set the wing aside. The stab is of course the, the narrower one. So these go on like so. We've not established a front or a back for our stab, so we're not really worried about that at the moment the uh, wing tips will establish what is the stab and what's the motor stick. Now since we want our wing tip straight up and down set that on there like so. The static charge is making it cling to the can. Now, we simply repeat the same thing on the other side, making sure we line the other tail fin up exactly the same way.
and now our wing tips are attached, or our stab tips are attached. Moving on to the wing, before you cover the wing, it's a convenient opportunity to take a sharpie and color in a panel to make it black so you get that 10% uh, bonus for supposedly making your airplane easier to see in the air. The wing tips come in two pieces rather than one piece. And that's because they are quite large. I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper for this task. So there's one wing tip. Like the uh, horizontal tail, the wing does not have a front and back assigned until you assign it by picking where you're putting your uh, wing tips. Alright, so make sure that your wing tips do line up, meaning they're facing the same way. And 
Now we have our wing and our stab. All right, so we have our wing uh, support assembly here. We're gonna put tape over it. And now we'll want some um, some of our scrap carbon. I think one piece will be enough. And what we're going to do is we're going to use tape once again to secure this. You've got to remember to curl the ends of that tape back under if you want to be able to get it off very easily. Now we're going to pop out these wing saddle parts. And so we're going to take the wing saddle and we'll go ahead, or sorry, the wing support, and we'll go ahead and glue it in place. Now, these tiny little pieces over here, you need to break two of those out. So put glue in each of these little wells here. And so what you're going to do is slot these in so they're actually going to stick out just a little bit on the other side and those are going to form um, locking points for your uprights. Then put some glue on your uprights here. Wing posts I believe is the proper term. get this flush with the bottom. I've got a little bit of excess there. We'll trim it in a minute. Um, and that should work. Oh, and the same thing at the top. sticking down. Now I'm going to build out a Division C fuselage, either one works. Um, but you need to, you know, they, they build exactly the same, but you need to pay attention to which one you need to be using. 
So what I'm going to do before I go too far down the road of assembly is I'm going to get out a couple of rubber bands. And we're going to get our um, wing saddle here. Now, I'm gluing this, uh, I'm going to assemble this so that the, this saddle assembly is on the left side of the fuselage. So this is the front of the fuselage, so over here on the left side, we're placing that on, and we want to position so it's straight up and down. Now we're going to take our wing, and it should slot down between the tops of the wing posts. Now before we do any gluing or anything, we're going to find a structure of the correct height to jig this in place so it's sitting level. We want to validate any wing twists that we might need um, I'll put something that has just a little bit of weight that'll pull that wing tip down. And so that gives us a little bit of wing twist over here, which is, is very useful to us. So now I can lift this back up. Then, I'm going to take this little scrap of carbon. And I'm going to glue it on diagonally right here. Now, I only have a diagonal here. I want to find another scrap piece of carbon. And I have to use scissors this time because I can't get to the wire cutters. Oops. Now, at this point, everything is relatively secure. So we pop this up. We can verify. We'll get a little bit of wing twist here. Everything looks good. So at this point, we have to take the wing back off of the motor stick. And that allows us to be able to just maneuver our motor stick a little bit better while we do the assembly on it. So we're going to pop out these motor stick uh, rear plates. It does not matter which side of the back of the motor stick this goes on, but it is important that this hook plate here be attached so that the slot here is above it. So you cannot, if you put it down like this, you're not going to be able to fly your airplane. You have to put it down here like so. Then the 
other piece of plywood which goes on the other side. It's a little tapered on one side here to kind of match a curve there. If you don't get it quite right, that's okay. And so now we have a slot there. Now before we do anything with our tail boom, we've got to make sure all the glue that might have gotten in that slot is completely hardened. And in fact, we're just going to let that sit for a little while. I am going, because now is a good time to do it, I am going to put two more rubber bands back here. Now, coming to the front of the fuselage, if you have an indoor free flight supply propeller, there are photos in the build manual and on our website showing that basically you're going to go on the um, opposite side from the curved section. Put a, cut a slot in there and then you can slide this bearing on from the front. And then you would want to take some spider wire, well, first of all, you would take it back out, squirt glue in there, slot this in, um, and then wrap it with a little bit of binding thread to make sure it stays secure. Now, if you're using the other propeller assembly method, Take out one of your nose bearings, put some glue on this top flat section up here. This is the back of your nose bearing. This is the front of your nose bearing. So we're going to glue it on just like this. You can take your propeller shaft slide it in. And we want to angle this. It's pointed slightly that way. And what that does is gives us a little bit of left thrust so our plane turns a little better. And my bearing just slipped right back out of there, which is fine. Now, that nose bearing will not stay in place on its own. So take some of your spider wire, put a dab of glue here. Start wrapping this very tightly and you want to go along the full length of that nose bearing, not just at the back of it or whatever. And so that gets us fully assembled there. We're going to wait a second on the propeller shaft. First, let's take our tail boom. Now, if you look closely at the tail boom, you'll see one side is flat. The other has a dog leg in it. You can see where it kind of bends right here. 
So you want to have this, area, this side that bends on the bottom so that when you slot it in, with the rubber bands holding it all the way down in the slot, if you look, it angles up a little bit here. If you get it the other way, you're going to have a harder time trimming your airplane. Now, we'll go ahead and slip the wing on. stay put there we go now if you're building a division B stinger which is very long um, they have a wider turning radius so when you glue your tail on you'll have to tilt your tail about like this so you can for example I can take my tape dispenser and use it to have the tail tilted up a little bit. Use something to weigh it down as the tail's tilted. This is the Division C airplane. It's a little shorter and so it naturally turns pretty tight. So we're gonna zero out that stab tilt to get started with. You can always twist the tail boom a little bit to tighten up the turn. So that looks about right, right there. of our stab tilt. There we go. So now structure is all secure, everything looks good. I think we'll be able to slide the wing forward a little bit. Take one of your propeller shaft, again assuming you have a, um, an Icara rather than an IFAS propeller. So we're taking two of these Teflon washers. They're a little hard to thread onto that propeller shaft, but let me show you how you do it. You stick one on your finger, and this takes some trial and error, but they will slip onto the propeller shaft. Slide the prop in place. Now we're going to put this up against the motor stick, against that nose bearing. And you can see I have some of my hook sticking out behind the nose bearing. That's the amount of space I want. So I don't want to have a drastic amount, and I don't want to have so little that this doesn't clear the back of the bearing. I'm going to slide it in that amount right there. Take a pair of pliers, grip them very hard, slide the prop back, and with your thumb, press 
this around to get a clean 90 degree bend. You only need about an eighth of an inch of that part that's bent over so you can snap off the excess. All right, so these, uh, these propeller bearings are designed to wear in a little bit. So the first time you put it in, it's not gonna fit very easily. So what we're doing is we're gonna fit this, uh, the end of our prop shaft into the bearing. And then we carefully thread it through. Like I said, sometimes it's a little tight. This one's fitting pretty well, but some of them are very tight. Now, to get this to lock in here, you can't just press this in and expect it to snap. It's designed not to do that. You have to rotate this thing down so that there's a bent down part of your prop shaft right there. And so that'll slide all the way in and now it's, it's locked in. If it comes forward, it'll pop free very easily. So what we want it to do is to slide in like that. And that gives you a removable propeller shaft assembly. Now we're going to attempt to weigh this airplane. My scale was a little finicky earlier. tip this up. Ideally you want your plane on something that provides a weighing surface, but mine is not cooperating. Alright, so we're underweight, so I've got to find a way to accurately weigh this. Actually, no what? Well, This should give us a weighing surface we can use. So we're sitting, okay, according to this, we are at 8.06 grams. So I actually don't need any clay on the airplane, because it actually came out a teeny tiny bit overweight. It's basically perfect. Okay, so I'm going to double up the rubber and measure with it doubled up about 15 inches. That's going to be more than I need and we'll give you what the final length is uh, so you can get a little closer. It's always better to have more than you need rather than less. And so I'm going to coil this up, start sticking it on my scale. It is not wanting to stay put at all. And what I have just discovered is I have actually made an underweight rubber motor. That's only 1.83. That's not good. Your goal is to start with a motor that's 2.1 grams or so. So. So I'm making a motor that's a little bit longer. That way I have all of the performance available to me. And before we put this on the scale, let's go ahead and get two O-rings out of our package here. Now these O-rings are important, uh, again, because they allow you to load the motor without losing turns, which is very, very important. Um, and it offsets the weight that you lose on your rubber motor due to them, which is an important point here. I'm actually going to have to cut this one a little sharp so it'll slide in. This is being stubborn. The O-rings count as part of the weight of your rubber motor. So we stick it through until so we got those O-rings and we can slide them on.
Now, since I trimmed a weird angle from that one end, that's the end that I want to make sure that I trim from. And this rubber is not staying put at all on this scale. All right, so we're at 2.2 grams. Now we're at 2.1, 2.15. 2.08, 2.037, we're getting closer. I'm going to trim off from the other end here. Oops, falling off the scale here. That's 2.07, 007, so we're almost there. And now we're at 1.99. That's where we want to be. Take some of your rubber lubricant now. Let's slide this guy out of the way. Uh, it's very important. The rubber lubricant does add to the weight of your rubber motor, so you have to wipe it clean before weigh-in usually. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny bit of rubber lubricant on my fingers here. I'm going to spread it along this piece of rubber real quick. The purpose of this is to keep the rubber from cutting into itself when you tie the knot. Now we're going to take a pair of hemostats here. We're going to squeeze them on and we want to make sure we have very little excess sticking out this side. We're locking these down as tight as they'll go. Now take your rubber and pull it around like a loop, like this, and reach your fingers through the loop and pull the rest of the rubber through, making sure to keep the O-rings so that they end up on the outside of this knot. Now we just want to cinch that knot down and tighten it as much as possible. Now we're going to repeat that same process as before. So we're just doing the exact same thing. So we're cinching a second knot down onto the second one. Now by pulling it nice and tight like this, and if you wrap it around, you can pull this way, and that holds it tight while I take a tiny dab of super glue and stick it mainly on the knot that's closest to the hemostats. We rub that until it's completely dried. The main thing is you want glue only on the knot. The rest of the rubber cannot have any glue on it or the glue will cut into the rubber and break it. Now if I loosen these hemostats, I should end up with the tails being very, very tiny. You can, if they look like they have a little bit of excess, you can trim a smidge of excess off of them. Bear in mind, once you have lubricated this rubber, uh, it wants to slide right off of the scissors. Now take your rubber lubricant. And rub it on here. So we want our rubber to be good and slimy. So now, let's slide the O-rings along. Don't put the knot all the way at the end of the rubber. You can get it close to the back end, uh, but you don't want it all the way at the end. Now your rubber motor is ready to go. Okay, so we have our lubricated rubber motor that we just made up. And we're going to load it into this winding stooge. I'm not going to show optimum winding because I want to stay, you know, in the frame of the camera here. But ideally you would stretch this out to a minimum of three times its relaxed length and then wind your way in. In your flight records, you want to record the number of turns this output cranks, not the input. 
Now this is a 20 to one winder. So if I put in one crank here, I get 20 on the output. And so you want to run that calculation um, for your records because should you need to, should your winder break and you have a spare winder that's say a 15 to one or a 16 to one or a 19 to one or whatever, um, you'll have that data to refer to. That also, should you have a trimming problem with your airplane and need to contact me, that gives you the information that I need to know to be able to help you. Now, I have disengaged this from the winder using the O-ring. I'm holding on very tightly here, and I can just slide this around onto that prop shaft. You may need pliers to open up the prop shaft a little bit to make it easier to slide uh, some O-rings on because uh, some of them fit on easier than others. And then you slide the other O-ring onto the back. Now we are going to take a scrap piece of wood and we're going to use it to lock the propeller. And I've cranked in about 400 turns or so. I want to know where the center of gravity with a loaded wound motor is. It's showing about um, almost three quarters of the way back on the wing. I guess that's closer to two thirds. And so it should fly fairly okay from there. We've again checked the wing for warps. We know what warps we set the wing at. We know that we set it for zero stab tilt. We don't have any rudder offset in at the moment. Um, the stab incidence is as it started out, and I have a little bit of left thrust shimmed in. So we will remove our little lock here, and we're going to go give this a quick test flight. Now I should mention if you are flying the Division B airplane, which is much longer, you can actually put the center of gravity slightly behind the wing, um, and it will balance, fly quite happily there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let go of the propeller first, and then I'm going to slide this into the air. I don't throw it, I slide it into the air. So the propeller is spinning, and I let go, and away the plane goes. Okay, so a lesson there. Uh, the airplane flew great. We saw that it took off, climbed away in a very nice steady left turn. Uh, I didn't see any bad behaviors at all. Unfortunately, when your plane hits obstacles, sometimes stuff like this happens. So what we want to do here in this scenario is try to get the airplane back as close to where it was uh, before as possible. Okay, so we're going to give this one more test run, and that's mainly to verify that everything is still correct. And that looks very, very nice. Hopefully without breaking anything. Alright, so the last thing is, of course, a note of model storage. So we've already shown that fully assembled the airplane with the prop out of the way and whatnot slides neatly inside our box well within the constraints of it. When you go to store one of these airplanes though it's very important uh, first of all mark where the um, wing goes on the fuselage Another thing is, remember, identification is required on your airplane, so put uh, your school name and whatnot on there so you don't get tiered for that. But when you're storing the airplane to travel somewhere, or um, it's going to be a few days before you fly it again, or even a few hours, it's best to take the airplane apart to put it in the box. So that means that in this case, I'm actually going to... 
start standing some things up in here. By doing this, you prevent anything from warping your airplanes. And I can carefully put a rubber motor down there and it'll be okay. So the bottom line is, this is how you store an airplane. Do not put any, uh, do not put any tools in the box with your airplane. Your tools, including your model stand, need to be stored elsewhere. I hope you've enjoyed this build video for the Stinger for 2023 for both divisions B and C. As we've mentioned, this kit, uh, just with the substitution of the fuselage, is eligible for either uh, competition category. I encourage you to check out the curriculum that is available uh, through our website that shows you the secrets of properly winding rubber motors, of trimming airplanes to their optimal performance capabilities, and so on. Um, it gives you the background in how to operate these airplanes. But uh, most importantly, I hope you have gathered what you need to get this airplane started and flying and enjoying the event. And we'll see you at the contest. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.